In this program, I'd like to review the Catoli 4-in-1 hydroponic meter. I'm going to have a look at the product, discuss some of its features. We're going to go in a little more depth as to what conductivity and total dissolved solids means. And then I'm going to compare the readings of this meter to a professional lab pH meter. So this is the probe for the hydroponic meter. It measures pH, temperature, total dissolved solids, and conductivity. That's why they call it a 4-in-1. Now, in actual truth, it's not a 4-in-1 because none of these meters measure total dissolved solids. And I'll discuss that in a few seconds. I really can't blame the manufacturer for calling it a 4-in-1 meter because all of their competitors do the same thing. But none of these meters measure total dissolved solids. This is the probe unit and it comes with a protective cap. You take the cap off and put this cap on instead. This one has holes in the side so the liquids can get to the probes. And it's designed quite well and it, it protects all of these probes from damage. The whole thing is waterproof and you can insert it into liquids up to about halfway. You shouldn't insert it any deeper. It also comes with one of these brackets so you can mounted on the side of a container and let it sit there. There's also a handy little meter to read off the results. Each time I pick this up and look at it, I can't help but wonder, I wonder if this thing vibrates. So why do you need one of these? It's used for measuring the liquids in hydroponics, as well as fertilizer that, that you might use for your house plants or containers. But the real advantage of this unit is that one probe does both conductivity and pH. When we're looking at the lower cost units that most gardeners use, you don't usually get one device measuring both of those. And that's a big advantage of the Catoli. Why is that important? Well, when you do hydroponics, you make up the mixture according to instructions, and now your plants start to grow. As they grow, they use both water and nutrients, but you don't know how fast they're using up those nutrients. If they use more water than nutrients, then the concentration gets stronger and stronger, and that's not good for plants. On the other hand, if the plant is taking out more nutrients than the water, then the solution gets weaker and weaker and plants stop growing as well. So when you're doing hydroponics, it's really important to measure two things, pH and conductivity. How much conductivity do you want in a hydroponic solution? What value are you aiming for? Well, I've written an article in my blog, gardenmist.com, and you can go and search that or look in the show description below. Uh, I'll put a link there for that. It gives you a nice table of all kinds of plants, along with the preferred pH and conductivity readings. But as a general note, when we're doing hydroponics, we want conductivity somewhere between 500 and 2500 microsiemens. Now let's talk a little bit about TDS, total dissolved solids, and conductivity. And the symbol for that is EC electrical conductivity. Many of these probes claim to measure both of those, but there is no simple probe that you can use to measure total dissolved solids. The way you measure that is to take your sample, dry all the water off of it, and then measure the weight of the remaining solids. And a probe's not going to do that. Conductivity, on the other hand, we can measure fairly easily. We just take a current and pass it through the solution. And the more stuff we have in that solution, the better it is at conducting electricity. And that's conductivity. Conductivity and TDS are sort of related, but not exactly. So we can get a conductivity value. And then what manufacturers do is they estimate the TDS value. And there's two different formulas for that. Some people use a 0.5 value to estimate it. And other people use a 0.7. The 0.5 seems to be more prominent in North America, and 0.7 is used a bit more in Europe. So if I have a reading of 1,000 microsiemens, that would be equal to 500 TDS if I'm using the 0.5 formula. Or it's equal to 700 TDS if I'm using the 0.7 formula. Now, which of those formulas is more correct? 
Well, that really depends on what you're measuring. There's no right answer to that. Both of them are approximation, and that's important for you to know. And that's why I recommend all gardeners ignore TDS. It's not a measured value. You never know what the correct TDS value is. So go with conductivity. That's actually measured. I explain all of this in my article on GardenMist.com. The other thing that's important to know is that there are actually two units of measure for conductivity. There's microsiemens and millisiemens. And one millisiemen is equal to a thousand microsiemens. So it's a metric unit of measure. The correct units are actually microsiemens per centimeter, but almost everyone drops the centimeter part and they just call it microsiemen. So how do you use one of these? Well, it's pretty simple. Once the unit's calibrated, all you have to do is insert this into your sample, shake it a little bit, make sure the air bubbles are out, and mix the solution a little bit. And then you take your measuring device, turn it on, and simply take a reading. Now, one thing I did notice about this measuring device is that it doesn't update very frequently. So you'll see a set of numbers, and then after so many seconds, it updates again. But it's not a continual update on the display. That's not a really big deal. You just have to be aware of that when you're taking measurements. What I like to do is put the probe in, take a measurement, wait a little bit, take another measurement and see if it's changing. If it's changing, wait a little longer till you get a stable reading. If it's not changing, well, then you've got your value. Now you can take the readings off of this unit. It's a simple device that you plug in the wall and it communicates using wireless communication with the probe. So these two are talking to each other and exchanging information. And you can take all your readings with this. It'll show you the pH, the conductivity, and the temperature. And in fact, it shows you, of course, the TDS, which, as I said, you should just ignore. Pretty easy to use. You turn it on and off here. Once it's on, it's measuring, and away we go. There's also an app for this, and you can put that on your phone. In my lab, I use an older Toshiba notebook and it's not compatible with this so I wasn't able to run the app. So make sure your device is compatible uh, and then you have to ask the question well what is the advantage of the app? Why use an app when this is giving you all of your measurements? Well there are some advantages to the app. One is that the app will show you historical values. So if I put this into my hydroponics tank and leave it there for a while, it'll continue to take readings, and then I'll be able to see how it's changing over time. That can be of value. You can also set certain alarms. So if your EC value drops too much, which means the plants are taking out all of the nutrients and you need to add some more, then it can give you a warning on your app. Your phone will beep and you come running home to fix the problem. I wouldn't do that, but you might be interested in doing it. The other advantage is that if I'm traveling, I can see what the value is while I'm away. Now, hydroponic values don't change that frequently, so you can wait till you get home, but I know some of you just love those apps, so the app is available if you want. The Catoli meter uh, works right out of the box, so it's already been pre-calibrated at the factory. But if you want to make sure it's calibrated correctly, you do have to go through a calibration process. And I did that here because I wanted to compare this unit with a lab pH meter, and I wanted to calibrate both of them using the same calibration solutions. That way I get a good comparison. So I went through the calibration process, and through that, I uncovered a bit of an issue here. You can do a two-point calibration for pH. That means you're going to use two pH standards. And I use the pH 4 and the pH 9 as my two standards because I know all my values are in between those two. The problem is it doesn't let you do that two-point calibration. It assumes you're going to use the 4 and the 6.8 as your two calibrators doesn't allow you to select a higher value. So I was forced into making up a third calibration solution, and I was able to do the three-point calibration. The other thing I noticed was that it's limited in which buffers you can use. Now, the package comes with some standard buffers, 
and they are fairly readily available. Uh, you can order them on Amazon. The buffers are 4.0, 6.8, and a 9.2. But you can buy buffers of different values. In fact, the 4 and 7 are quite popular. And there doesn't seem to be any way to adjust this unit to use those other buffers. So you have to use the buffers that are programmed into the unit. Uh, I see that as a limitation. I don't know if in the app you're able to specify a different kind of buffer, but certainly on this unit you can't. There's also the option to adjust a value, and quite honestly, I have no idea what that does. It changes the value up or down, but I don't know if that's for the whole curve, for a particular buffer solution. It never really made a lot of sense to me the way this unit works for that. The other thing you might want to do is to calibrate the conductivity. I mean, that's the value you're really interested in when you're doing hydroponics. Right now, the manufacturer does not ship conductivity standards, although the instrument is able to calibrate for conductivity. So you can go out and separately buy some calibration standards and use those to do the calibration. Now, for gardeners, I think the value is fine, even if it's not calibrated because we're not fine-tuning these hydroponic solutions that accurately. We want to be in the ballpark. And as long as we're close to what we want, that's okay. So you probably don't need to calibrate conductivity for hydroponic use. So that gives you a good overview of the unit. Now I wanted to see how well it actually works. I set up a test where I'm going to compare the Catoli unit to a lab-grade pH meter. Let's see how they compare. So these are the results I got. I took some distilled water that I actually purchased from the grocery store and took some readings. You can see that the conductivity is really low, which is what you'd expect. Uh, the pH between the two units is not that close, but it's important to understand that when you measure pH of a distilled water solution, it's very hard to get good accuracy. There's not enough salts in there to make the thing work. I also measured my dehumidifier water, and this was kind of a surprise to me. I expected low conductivity because there's not many salts in this solution, right? That's the whole point of the dehumidifier. It's producing very pure water with no salts in it. But the pH surprised me, and in fact, I did the test twice and got similar readings. So I'm not sure why the pH is so low. I also checked my tap water, and it's around 7, and has a reasonable amount of conductivity, and our water is fairly hard, so we've got lots of minerals in there. Then I also measured the softened tap water. Now, this is tap water that goes through an ion exchanger that uses sodium chloride. Now, that water you should never use on your plants, but I was just curious to see how the two compare. I also collect rainwater in a barrel outside. Now, so this is water that's come off the roof. It's collected some dirt and, and bird droppings and whatever else on my roof and then washed it in the barrel along with a lot of leaves and other debris. So I've got pH is about 6.5 to 7 and low conductivity, which is what I expected. I also make up hydroponic solution and I use the master blend hydroponics for lettuce and the value there is a pH fairly acidic it's actually in a good range for plants and it has a really high conductivity and that's what you'd expect right you've just made up this fertilizer solution it's fresh it should have high conductivity because it has all these nutrients in it I was a bit surprised at the lower pH that it is I also measured my standard plant fertilizer, and this is the material I use for my house plants and my streptocarpus collection. And this is a miracle Grow product, and for the water there I use about 20% tap water and 80% rain water, and those are the results that I got. I'm quite surprised conductivity wasn't higher. I'm going to have to have a look at that. Maybe I need to use a little more fertilizer. Overall, the values compare quite well here. There's a little discrepancy between the Catoli unit and the pH meter, but they're in the right ballpark. I wouldn't be too concerned about those differences. It's actually fairly hard to measure pH accurately down to one decimal point. So what is my overall opinion about this unit? 
The first point I'd like to make is that if you're doing hydroponics, it's important to measure your nutrients. You have to know what's going on. And most of the discussions I see online go something like this. Oh, I made up the solution two weeks ago. Uh, now I, I don't know what to do. Should I replace it? Should I dump it out? Should I add more nutrients? You don't know. Why don't you know? You have to get a meter like this and measure conductivity and pH. Both of those are important for plant growth. The advantage of this unit is that it does both in one unit. So that's a really nice feature. So what now? Well, I'm going to run another test. I'm going to use this unit and measure how the conductivity and pH change in a hydroponic system over time. I'm going to show you the results of that in a separate program, and it's going to take me several weeks to do that. So keep an eye out for that and make sure you subscribe and click the little bell so you get notified. I want to see how quickly plants take up those nutrients. How long do I have to wait before I make an adjustment? And what kind of an adjustment do I need? Do I just add more nutrients? Do I add more water because the nutrients are getting concentrated in that container? So for that test, I'm going to use some of my desktop hydroponic systems. I'll be using the Let Pot system for that. Now, if you'd like to learn more about hydroponics, have a look at this video right here. And if you're more interested in growing house plants, have a look at these videos here. Happy gardening.